greetings! Okay, today we're just going to continue on with uh, the force relationships that we talked about last time. I just want to clear up a few details because all we did was use a two-dimensional sheet of paper and I still have those drawings. We'll go over them again in a second. Very good. Okay. Okay, we're talking about spinning like a top, right? And this is the force relationships when any object spins like a merry-go-round. Okay or like a top or like a car tire anything your hard drive machinery that makes anything i mean honestly all of modern society is based on what i'm talking about today and when you actually try to apply this simple basic engineering principles to the fake globe <laughs> it just doesn't work and we're going to go into that we're going to show you exactly why um, so we drew this diagram so what you need to see here is that the axis of spin is right through the page, okay? It goes into the paper, all right? That's the north-south. This is like a cross-section through the equator, okay? And so we'll show you that right now. Hang on. What it represents is this. If you took the ball, okay, and we slice it through the equator, okay, we and then we just lift it up like that to show you the picture, okay? So that's what this picture is, okay? And these are the force relationships. So that line right there, point A to point B, you can draw it across here, okay? And so what that tells you is that when the globe explodes, it breaks apart along the longitude, okay? So just pretend, okay, let's, okay, this is how it is, right? And we're showing this. So when it breaks, okay, there's line A, B, you can imagine, okay, this part's just going to break like that. So it's going to break along the longitude like this. Okay, forget that this is the equator. Don't let that distract you. It breaks along the longitude, okay? So that's a really important thing because what this shows is the sum of all the radial forces pushing out everywhere from the spinning, okay, within the ball, okay, within the ball, it's as if, these are the exact words out of engineering textbooks, it's as if the sum of the radial forces act along the line AB to push it out that way. So you can say it all sums up right there at that point. Okay, so that's huge, because that, that's it. The globe is done right then and there. Um, okay, so it's as if they act along AB. That one sentence destroys the entire globe religion. So let's just, so when you see the apple spinning at spin2.flat.wtf, the north-south, you know, analogous to the fake low birth is where the stem is that's actually how they <coughs> spun the apple <coughs> and it split along the axis the longitude as if you cut it with a knife 
exactly like this okay that's how awesome and easily we can demonstrate the force relationships within a spinning object now of course they're pretending that this is a solid object because only solid objects can spin like a top so just on that one point alone the fake globe earth is done okay and that's the end of the globe okay so let's just talk a little more for a sec okay so we showed you this take this ring okay that's pretend this was just a ring well it breaks one half of the ring okay it's going to separate from the other half okay and that's like you sliced it this way okay along the longitude okay right along the longitude I'll show you that using this for a sec we'll just use half the ball we don't need the whole ball okay all right so there's your ring depicting the equator okay and remember the force relationships how they work okay, long a b and they're going to push out that way so this half of the ring is going to separate from the other half of the ring it's like you took a knife and cut the ring there and there well with the sphere it's the same thing okay it's just a bunch of rings concentric rings stacked one on top of the other okay and then this half the whole sphere and half the ring just separates okay that way from the other half going that way okay let's just try to get the other half without the yellow thing there okay it's going to separate like that okay and that's what half the ring will do as well one half and the other half and that's exactly what this drawing shows doesn't it okay it's like this actually it's like that all right so one half of the sphere separates from the other half along this is the north south axis that's all I really had to say. This is north-south. Okay? So that's it. Now, this is the instant, the moment it breaks. And you can calculate F. Okay, so we know it's as if it acts along AB. We can calculate it for right here. Okay, F. Alright? We can do that. But the thing is, that F that we calculate for this point A, B, remember we said, this is occurring everywhere, okay? So it's not just, you know, it's, it's not just a ball on a string, okay? And then you have like a whole bunch of them. No, this is the ball itself spinning on its own axis, okay? So this relationship occurs everywhere and we drew that. Let's show you that drawing too. So that's the north south. Or that's point A B, let's say. It can break along any longitude. That's what I'm trying to say here. It can break along any of the longitudes, okay? Not just the one we drew point A to B, all right? Any of the longitudes around the ball. It can break and this relationship exists at every longitude so at every point because this will be the equator at every point around the equator you have this relationship at every point and we drew it we drew it like this okay coming off of this one or we can do it up here. So the sum of the radial forces, that total F, 
exists at an infinite number of points all around the equator. That's why <laughs> the, their comeback argument, it's not even their comeback argument, they have no argument for this. Um, but one crazy guy, crackpot, uh, crack pipe smoker, Polster X, and nothing against crack pipe smokers, but this guy, I mean, honestly, he doesn't know what he's talking about. And his sidekick, Paolo Salucci, okay, they think, you know, because they can do the accounting and the math, you know, with F to, to calculate total F, so what? Calculate total F. The equations they use only apply to objects on the surface and to only one instance of F, okay? To just this one snapshot of F the moment it breaks. Not, in, so they don't include the fact that F is the same everywhere at an infinite number of points. Okay, so let's just show you that with the ring and the ball. So what they do, okay, they take F, that one instance of F, okay, and they spread it, the value that they calculate has to be spread all around the ball. And it's like taking this ring, okay, because the math they use only pertains to objects on the surface, like, let's say, this piece of wood, could be a person, doesn't matter, it's objects on the surface, okay? So what they do, they'll take a slice, like an onion ring, if you took an onion and sliced it, okay, and then took the onion ring that represents the equator, and then they put it on top of the equator, like this. Okay, okay, so this is on the surface, all right, and we've calculated F for it because you can calculate a mass for this, okay, and you can multiply it by 9.8, okay, and you can calculate a weight for it, and then you can plug it into the equation, blah, blah, and you have, and you can show that, oh, gravity opposes the weight of this entire ring 300 to 1. Well, sure it does. If you're using the math that applies to objects on the surface, yeah, sure it does. But that, that's irrelevant. Okay, you have a ring, buddy. You don't just have this ring standing on the surface, okay? Or the mass of this ring turned into a cube and you put it on the surface. It doesn't work like that, okay? No, you have this ring and the ring is spread out its mass all around the surface, therefore, um, the force that pertains to this ring that we showed with the red arrows, the sum of the radial forces, we said F. Okay, that F, they also have to spread that incrementally all around the ring, okay, in order to use the equations that apply to objects on the surface to claim their 300, you know, to 1 ratio that gravity opposes it 300 to 1 in keeps it together. No, no, it doesn't work like that, okay? Gravity, it just doesn't work. It doesn't exist anyways, but anyways, it doesn't work like that. The F that we calculated with those red arrows, as if it acts along AB, that F, um, just to show you again, okay? This, okay, it's acting everywhere around the surface at every possible point okay and that amounts to trillions of tons of force all around the equator okay so it's not just that the fact that they can show their math that they can oppose you know their surface object math that you know it's 300 times more powerful force no it's not no it's not your force relationships are junk they don't apply to the ball, okay? They don't apply to the ball. They apply to a ring spread out all on the surface of the ball. That's what it applies to.
and it's a joke. It doesn't work. Okay? Simple as that. So, so that's it. I mean, I don't really know what more I can say. It just, it's that simple, okay? Their junk math pertains to taking a ring, putting it on the surface, and then calculating as if it was a surface object, okay? But within the ball, even in their reification fantasy model, um, gravity behaves differently. It doesn't attract things to the surface, okay? All their math only goes up until the surface for objects on the surface. But from the surface down, they treat it as a solid object. Gravity cancels out. So the, it's just crazy. Gravity cancels out and it's zero at the center. It's a joke. Okay, so if you took, you took the ball, Okay, one half of the ball pulls equally on the other half. Okay, all right. So the gravity from this half of the ball pulling on the gravity from this half of the ball cancels out. It cancels out. <laughs> so they got nothing. That's within the ball. It's a linear relationship. It just goes Whereas on the surface it's exponential. So two different relationships, even they contradict themselves, okay? They don't even understand their own force relationships, okay? So that's it. That's the trick. Now you know, and hopefully um, when I integrate these clips into the original one I did with just the paper, the two-dimensional paper, it'll make a lot more sense now because we've explained it in three dimensions, all right? All right, and that's the end of the globe.